everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn. I hope that you are doing well today. I am crafting with Susan Tierney Cockburn's um, latest collection with Spellbinders. This actually released back in January, so I'm a little bit late getting to it, but I do believe it's still available for sale if you want to um, pick it up. The particular set that I'm using is Gerber Daisy. I love daisies. They are my favorite flower. And you can, as with all of uh, Susan's floral dye sets, create gorgeous, gorgeous 3D flowers that if you follow, in particular, if you follow Susan's um, kind of uh, directions, and she always puts out fabulous tutorial videos, you can create really realistic looking flowers too. I mean, it's just really amazing what she does with paper. I wanted to do something a little bit different today because I'm live streaming this weekend and the theme that we set for us in um, the next upcoming Crafty Fun with Friends episode is uh to get messy and um make you know kind of messy backgrounds so i thought that i would get myself in the mood and uh try for messy flowers and initially you saw me lay out all of my die cuts just straight into this um it's just a shipping box and i thought why waste all of this beautiful color by spraying just onto cardboard. Um, so I decided to actually lay down some white uh, cardstock to kind of uh, catch all of that wonderful color. And what I'm spraying with is, um, it's from Imagine Crafts and they are called Fireworks. They have this gorgeous shimmer that the camera really doesn't do justice to. But by laying my die cuts over that white cardstock, I get the, a nice stenciled um, kind of a negative image of, or I, I guess it's more like masking, um, but I get the negative image of um, the flowers. And now I can just cut this sheet down into panels that I can use as backgrounds. So I I just thought this was a really fun way to uh, get the most out of our products, not let all of that gorgeous pigment go to waste. It's a fast way to color up your floral die cuts. And it's a really um, interesting look to go with something a little bit more abstract as opposed to uh, doing the full on 3D flower forming and shaping. I, I'm going to do a little bit of that, but but not, not a ton. First, I need to make some card bases because I am fresh out. So I like to just do all of my scoring first along the entire um, length of the card. And then because my guillotine can cut several sheets at a time, uh, I, it can probably handle more than just the two sheets of 100 pound cardstock, but that's all I'm going to push it to do. I, I, I don't want to... Um, even if the guillotine can cut through many layers, it's whether you can also hold firm those layers so that as your blade is cutting, your paper isn't shifting underneath. So, so I didn't want to risk it, and um, and so I only cut two two sheets at a time. So I'll go ahead and create a couple of different cards. I think I actually end up creating three cards, so I still have one leftover panel to play with. But what I thought, the first thing I thought might be really interesting is to overlay the flower right on top of it may not be exactly where it came from originally, but more or less where it came from. And because these flower petals are designed such that you would, if you were to create the 3D flowers, you would actually layer up um, two of them 
to form a single flower, kind of like what I'll do on this card here. Um, for that first card, I thought I would use the negative image as one of those layers and then just layer one die cut over top of it. So I, I love this. Um, it's, it's not something that I've done before and I, I just really had a lot of fun playing with um, different configurations and just the whole idea of um, the negative image creating a background that I could use was a lot of fun and I'm definitely going to be looking at my dies a little bit differently and see if um, there are other dies that beyond just florals because I think florals would be really fabulous especially floral die cuts like this one because the shape is so well defined that the negative image it's it's immediately um, you know obvious what that is and and so um i'm definitely gonna be looking to do uh that sort of um uh, masking technique again it's been so long since i've done 3d flower forming that i've uh kind of forgotten all of my <laughs> techniques. Um, and I didn't watch Susan's video as a refresher before filming mine or uh, actually creating my card here. Usually, you'll see me do this on the next petal. Usually what I do is I start on the back of the die cut. And I'll, I'll go back and, and do this, uh, this that particular die cut again, because I looked at it and I was like, something looks not right. And that's when I realize I usually start on the back. <laughs> so I like to use a, a ball stylus. Um, these are wonderful. They come, it's, it's pretty heavily weighted where the, um, where the two ends are. And usually you can buy a set of them that come in different sizes. So you would just pick the, um, the size that works for the petal that you're using. And from the back, I like to just in circular motions from the center working out to the tip of the petal. I just like to, um, kind of do circular motions and it helps to break down the cardstock. It starts to curl that cardstock and it gives it that natural kind of curvature of the flower kind of opening and then bending, you know, bending downwards a little. And so you can see that, um, again here, I am, um, doing the shaping on a flower forming mat. These are really these are really great. If you if you're gonna do a lot of this, I would definitely recommend getting an actual mat. It's it's denser than say like a mouse pad, and and you need that sort of cushion to uh, really push into. Um, but after I've done the forming on the back, I just flip it over to the front and I just do a little bit of cupping where I do circular motions right in the center. And what that does is it just brings um, those petals upwards and so um, that they have that nice curvature, but towards the ends or the tips of the petals, they still curve down. So... With, uh, I've created, I have in mind two cards, um, straight out of the gates, just looking at what inspires me with these panels. And one thing with, um, the Hammer Mill 100 pound, like the super smooth, uh, digital copy paper, I think it's slightly longer than 11 inches because I always, I always um, find myself having to trim a little bit off every time. Um, and so you might find yourself having to do that too, but um, but it's uh, it's no big deal. I, I always, um, especially with black, um, it's always very noticeable <laughs> when I'm not doing like a full mat of black, it it, I usually just uh, leave it, but when I do this edge to edge matting with black, it's it's so obvious that there's still like a little little bit of white. And I'm gonna keep all of these cards really simple in terms of the sentiment. 
Um, I already have some glimmered sentiments and I find that with bright colors like the ones that I'm using and these fireworks fireworks sprays I did get them as a set of three and it's called uh, juicy purples even though one of them is very pink but um but I find that with bright colors adding a matte or a border of black really I, th I feel like it really helps it to um to really pop even more so so I love how that first one came out and it was so easy all I did was just overlaid um that just a single die cut over the negative image but I did offset it so that you could still see um it was as if the the negative the white um, area of the background was one of the layers of the flower. For this card, I'm going to actually layer up um, two of the die cuts as, as you would normally um, kind of use these floral die cuts when you're creating your 3D flowers. And um, I do love that these sprays add this very pearlescent sheen to it. I know the camera is probably not picking that up very well but it's in person it's just gorgeous and and that's why I want to keep the rest of the card uh pretty simple so that it doesn't take away from the background or from the 3d flower and the dies do come with or die set I should say do come with um the stamen in the center it comes with leaves and it even comes with a couple ladybugs which is super super awesome but I like I said I kind of want to keep all of this really simple and I wasn't going for anything super realistic because of the fun background that I made and I just love the um the idea of using the negative image of the background kind of, you know, as part of the um, design and and making that an element of the focus of my card. The, um, what I'm stamping with here, so I have never uh, stamped sentiments with these brilliant uh, dewdrop uh, ink pads which are from Imagine Craft, but I thought, I didn't take a super close look, but I thought after I stamped that first one by hand, just with an acrylic block, I thought that I had smudged it, that I had moved the acrylic block as I was stamping. And so I decided to pull out my um, stamp positioning tool and, and give it another go. And so I gave it another go and I, I'd like to, um, I prefer to not use super heavy pressure when I'm stamping and I, I would rather stamp multiple times to get it to how dark I want because with the positioning tool, you can, you can rest assured that it's going to stamp in the same spot every time. But if you push down too hard, you can get a little bit of, um, blurring if it, if, especially if your stamp is an acrylic stamp. Uh, these ones aren't. But one thing that I notice when you stamp with these brilliance, I, I hope that you can see this on the camera. I think I caught a good angle of it where because there is some silver, um, they're pearlescent. And I think there's some silver mica that makes it pearlescent. But when you stamp, that gets pushed to the edge and you get this like cool two-tone outline effect where the pigment is in the center and the silver is a border to it. And that's what I thought was like me uh, shifting and, and moving things around. So this is a regular um, stamp, the third one. And then the top two are the ones with the pearlescent, the brilliant uh, dewdrops. That's just so cool. I... Um, I don't know if 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 that's something that is like common knowledge that but this is the first time um I'm stamping with these pearlescent uh inks and and I was just 
pleasantly surprised and, and shocked at that effect because it's just so cool. And uh, to get that sort of silver outline, um, it's so funny that, that I kept thinking that I was somehow uh, shifting things and and getting these imperfect uh, impressions, stamp impressions, which I found unusual given that these are Spellbinders stamps and they always stamp beautifully for me. First go just with an acrylic block, but then I looked a little bit more closely and I thought, wow, that is super awesome. So I wanted to play up that silver a bit more and I lined my sentiment with some silver glitter card. And even though I already put a Nuvo drop in the center of my flower, I had used some really gorgeous dream drops in the indigo eclipse color. But because I've got a little bit of that silver going on with the stamped sentiment and the glitter card, I actually changed it to a glitter drop. So I scraped out the dew drop, <laughs> very carefully scraped it out, and then, um, added my uh, silver moon dust uh, nouveau drop instead. So that is my um, second card. Here's a look at the first card that I created. I love that black um, border. And I do end up making a third card, but I filmed that as a short video. So you'll find that on my um, channel as a short. And if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you'll see it there as a reel. Thanks again. And until next time, happy crafting and have a fabulous day. Bye.